Okay, I'm I'm looking here today at the uh, the series that I've been just starting the other day, and they're going rather quickly for me as I I get into the flow of the lines and the and the comp the rhythms and the uh, compositional devices that I use. I had been, just finished a series on fish, and uh, it was a, just a satire, satirical fish things that I did for downstairs. But what I'm what I'm what I'm looking at is uh, possible walls for murals, and possible uh, just the the old thing about my my murals was the rhythm in the wall, finding the rhythm in the wall, and and finding the lines that connect the parts and and the shapes in a way that makes a complete statement as well as a complete. Uh, story that is that is, is, is can be totally abstract or have some human elements in it in this case I'm using my my F F Faber Castell pit indie ink felt tip as par as the blackest black and my black watercolor for the grays and I draw with my pencil oh number two pencil in the, uh, the the beginning drawing everything flows together but not necessarily in that order I have to have the lines connect and unconnect go and come in a manner that makes it visually interesting but also to see as a possible enlarged wall size any of these could be wall size and uh, they would be the starting point for the mural I'm gonna I'm gonna take uh, I'll show you how I use this uh, the the indie ink felt tip you can see that uh, I go right over the pencil mark and I'm making these marks To tell also the story of the rhythms in the wall and when I talk about the rhythms in the wall or in the paper it is visually making the eye move through the work through the through the wall through the paper and through the, the story of the shapes the story of the shapes are, is a story unto itself and when we get into telling a story of the shapes we can we can start making the connections visually that make it possible to end up with a whole wall that is a particular shape the outside shape and the inside shape and the outside shape may not be uh, part as much of the story as the inside shape it's like the details in a story are inside and the general shape is outside and it's it's having both working together I'm going to go back into this and the importance of the black so I, I it's important that I have this variety in the line too I want some thick and some thin I don't want them to be the same thickness but I also don't want it not to have an overall consistency that is part of the pattern
this shape is talking to this shape. What they're, what they're conversing about, I'm not interested. All I'm interested is that they're relating to each other and the importance of each one as a shape unto themselves and as part of the pattern. Sometimes I'll take the two lines that are close by and make them one big line. Sometimes I, I don't. The important thing, again, when I'm talking about the line, it's making a particular rhythm pattern inside the paper or the wall or the canvas or whatever I'm using at the time. These, these are drawn quickly. They're drawn as a flow, and that's that flow that we've, I've talked about many times, the flow in the arm, the brain to the arm, to the hand, onto the paper. So as this begins to develop, I may take straight lines and more flowing lines, more organic lines to play them against each other, just like in, in nature with the uh, and having buildings around in, in a park, say, and you have the, the, the organic and the geometric. But it's all a particular geometry. And it's that geometry that I've talked about before that the Greeks call philotaxis. That's the order in which things grow in nature. And again, I live in a beautiful place. I live in an incredibly rich variety of trees, variety of, of terrain, and uh, with oceans and the rivers and all kinds of variety of trees that all become part of the work because I'm I because I live here I take it in and I put it out in some form but I don't know what that form will be until it goes down on the paper I can get an, I would have an idea in my head how I want to approach it but how how it ends up maybe something else. So the other thing that I'm looking at is the importance of the darks. And the importance of the darks, they have little bits of light in them. What I just put that on there was that I'm letting the darks breathe. Darks uh, don't breathe as easily as lights. When we have darks from like this indie ink felt tip pen, which is one of the most wonderful inventions I could think of for this kind of drawing, we, we, we have to allow for the for the breathing of the blacks and so a solid black has to have a place to let out some air and what i just did here i let out some uh, those lights let out some air for that dark shape there let's let's look up here in this shape here where i put 
half and half, um, you know, a part of the dark and part of the light, and those orga those more organic forms coming over. And through the organic forms, I will put thing a line going through them. And when I'm drawing it, I don't know. But I do know that I see these forms some places on the path. I live on the path here on Cannery Row, the recreational trail. And I remind people it's a recreational trail, not a, not a race track. That's my uh, statement about that. But I want to be sure to have that, that, that kind of uh, line, that, that, are, that very organic line So the so again we're talking about and we make change I'll make changes in it as I as I it tells me when to make changes and and I'll keep looking and to see where it is and what's happening Now there I get a variety of the line and I'll leave this op this more breathing space for the darks again letting the darks breathe and the white and the light coming through the light through the white part of the paper As I'm looking at this, where I just marks I just made there, I'm looking to see that I may want this to come down and have a little more weight, the weight of the dark at the bottom here, to balance this off, this dark down there. As I look at this shape up here, It may give it more rhythm by by moving around on it. I go around the shape and through a shape to tell the story of the space. And it's the story of the space in these that, that lets them breathe, as well as The, the darks needing to breathe. The, the lights have a special job in telling this story. Now I'm going to use my one of my watercolor one of my watercolor very fine watercolor pen uh, brush and I'm going to dip into my black and to get a get a uh, my black uh, watercolor to sometimes make grays in here a warm gray because it's a warm black but I don't want again I don't want to trap it I want it to breathe and I want texture. So now I'm getting texture by just letting the brush drag a little bit. And I don't want it to be the same. So sometimes it's darker. Now it's important that the, that the white is floating around it as it was in my 
mask paintings and in the fish so that we have some that we have that energy going in different uh, around inside the inside the watercolor paper and this watercolor paper is arches 140 in my show that I'm having in May at the Carmel Art Association it's 300 pound rough watercolor paper these are papers the that are um, the uh, the 300 pound rough is made one sheet at a time in the mold the mold making process is an ancient process going back centuries and the importance of that process is that it made it possible originally to make what we call today paper and for those uh, who are not familiar with the, all the different watercolor papers, Arches 300 pound rough is, I think, the most beautiful of all the watercolor papers in Western, and I, in Western art, and uh, in Western watercolor, and I think that the most beautiful uh, Japanese papers are are also made one sheet at a time. So as I'm looking at this. I'm seeing where I could do little little notes here and there. And then maybe I want to put a little bit of the go outside, a texture on the outside, giving you something give me giving me something that'll play against the evenness of the of the fill tip. Sometimes it'll make a, a a large but I want I want to hit that the paper that that makes it watercolory. Again, I don't want it even. I want it to play against the straightness and the evenness of the felt tip. So I'm working against the felt tip. Now, sometimes I'll have ones like this one up here or this one over here where I don't do that because I want that white to really have that, that white, uh, the outside shape to really be an important part of the story. But here I want some more grays uh, on the outside and the roughness and so it's not an even line but that's it I feel like it, that I've got something here right now but I I will let it tell me it'll sit here and tell me what I what it needs me to do I don't decide the artwork decides the artwork always decides for me what it's what it needs I don't. I don't try to make something. Maybe I have in my head something that I want it to be. It may not become that. It may become what it wants to be. And that's the importance of these. Is these live a life of their own, and I think they have a life to them that is unique. So if you could, if you can imagine these wall size, and I say this, these could be uh, 20 feet by 60 feet. Would be a good would be a good observation of these. These could be uh, in that in that uh, in in keeping with a wall that perhaps has uh, uh, very uh, geometric uh, possibilities uh, uh, to to play against the uh, organic against the geometric again. That's an important part of, of mural painting for me, is the organic against the geometric, and I think I think it's for now it's done. We'll see what it says 
It may tell me later that you got it all screwed, you guy. You blew it. Or you may tell, you may say, hey, this is good. This is working. But I think it's in keeping with the rest of them. And because they're a series, I want them all to be related. That's the, that's the, uh, how I work in a series because that's how my mind works. My mind is saying what the process, helping me with the process all the time. Again, the combination of the felt tip and the watercolor, English watercolor brush, which is sable and, and goes to a point and has gone, this brush I've had since high school. I'm 79 years old and I've had this since I was 17 years old.